Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and just last month there was a devlog series that finished its almost 3 year journey. I'm talking about the game Punch a Bunch made by YouTuber Pontypants. It is finally out and thankfully it is finding massive success. The game is a very unique boxing game with an interesting control scheme, visually it looks very excellent, the graphics are great and the fact that it's all physics based adds some extra goofiness on top. It already has almost 500 reviews so in a bit let's guess how much money that might mean. For me I've been watching this devlog series since the very beginning, his devlogs are very entertaining, very easy to watch. The first devlog was all the way back in April 2020, so almost three years. It's definitely been a long journey. He quit his job at one point and even moved to a place with a lower cost of living just so he could keep working on the game. Those are definitely some drastic measures that I wouldn't really recommend, but thankfully it seems like that bet paid off. Although I also have to say that initially I didn't actually think the game would find much success, so I'm very happy to have been wrong. Two years ago I made a nice video on some devlogs you could watch in 21. By the way, out of those five games, two have not released, two are still in development, and one was cancelled. So in that video I mentioned Punch a Bunch and I highlighted how good the game looked and how the devlogs were very entertaining, but I also said that fighting games are very niche, it is very very rare for an indie fighting game to find success nowadays, especially on Steam. So based on that I was concerned about the prospects of the final game, however I did mention that it had those two things going for it, the excellent visuals and the very entertaining devlogs. And I believe it's thanks to those two that the game did manage to find great success in the end. Also a very important thing that I've mentioned time and time again are wish lists. Back then when I made that video, which was when the game was just 10 months into development, back then it had just launched a Steam page so it had pretty much zero wishlist, whereas by the time the game released it had gathered 1900 followers, which means the game had close to 20,000 wishlists, which is a very good amount. It's kind of funny to watch the original devlog and hear him talk about how this is supposed to be a simple game because everybody always tells you to start small with your first game. I'm sure he was frustrated over not being able to hit his original goal of making and releasing a quick game, however one of the actual benefits of going over on development time is it gives you more time to gather some wishlists. It is thanks to this 3 year graph that the game did manage to find success in the end. Although of course this graph is driven by his excellent very entertaining devlogs, all the videos have at the very least 40 to 50k views and some even go up to a million. He definitely has a lot of skill as a video producer and also as a storyteller. That is why in my original video I mentioned that I had no doubt that he would continue to find success on YouTube and thankfully that YouTube success also turned into game success. For guessing how much money the game made, I actually cover the general calculation in another video. You can guess the number of copies sold based on the number of reviews. Basically you take that number and you multiply it by the box ladder number, which is named after the developer who first came up with that method. That number is a multiplier which obviously varies per game but can be as low as 20 or as high as 70, meaning that essentially for every person that leaves a review, there are between 20 or 70 others who bought and played the game but did not leave a review. Now for this game, since a lot of the sales are going to come from his audience, audience who want to see him succeed, I would guess that it means this game has a high rate of reviews to sales, but at the same time, even without his audience, I still think the game stands out, the visuals are gorgeous and the goofy physics definitely help it find an audience. So with this I would guess the multiplier to be probably somewhere around 30. If we take 450 reviews multiplied by 30, we get a possible 13,500 copies sold. At a price point of $15, that means probably around $200,000. That's definitely a great number, especially for just about 2 weeks of sales, it's definitely a huge indie success. Although of course, like I also mentioned in the video about is game dev luck, the word success means different things to different people, so only he knows if he hit his goals, and I truly hope it does. Objectively speaking, this game is on the top 5 percent of Steam games ahead of thousands of other games. With a strong launch like this, it will keep selling very well over time and possibly even get invited to a Steam daily deal or winter or summer sale and sell even more. But also do remember that this number, well, first of all, it's just an estimate, only he knows the real number, but more importantly, that's gross revenue. Meaning from that you have to take away chargebacks and sale taxes, then you have to take away the steam cut, the income tax, until you get to the final net result. With all that the final net number is probably less than half. So I don't think he's going to buy a Lambo anytime soon, but it definitely is a huge success and I hope he's very happy with the result. So based on this, what can you take away and apply to your own games? Once again it goes back to what I covered in the marketing video, I titled that one the most important skill to be a successful game developer and that is still very much true. The excellent, very entertaining devlogs were his marketing strategy. They drew a ton of views which generated a ton of wishlists which converted into a ton of sales. Then those initial sales push it up in the Steam algorithm which helps it sell even more and so on. And despite the genre being niche, fighting games on Steam usually don't do very well, despite that the physics twists and the unique controls do help it stand out along with the excellent visuals which he knew were going to be his strong point. So great devlogs plus unique idea plus great visuals equals success. Now for you, if you want to find success with your games, you 
need to find some way to market them. If you have a great, very entertaining personality and some good video editing skills, you can attempt devlogs in this style. Obviously, on the extreme end of this style, you have Denny with Carlson, who is one of the top wishlist games on Steam. But if you don't have those skills, just like I don't, I know I don't really have the personality to have an entertainment channel, but I do know that I can make tutorials to teach how to make games, so that's what I'm doing here. Which of course, part of my plan is hopefully there's a bunch of you who enjoy my tutorials and will hopefully want to help me by wishlisting my Steam game, Total War Liberation. That's one of the main ways that I'm handling marketing for my game. Alternatively, you can try posting GIFs on Twitter or Reddit. Those can sometimes go viral and help you get thousands of wishlists. Or one that I haven't tried myself is actually TikTok. I've heard great things from other devs. If you go viral on TikTok, you can easily get millions of views, which can translate into tens of thousands of wishlists. That's a huge amount. So the best takeaway from this successful game is make sure you market your own games, either through devlogs or whatever else works with you. And finally, let me say congrats to Ponty. I'm always happy to see another indie find success, and I'm looking forward to whatever project he works on next. Alright, hope that's useful. Check out these videos to learn some more. Thanks to these awesome Patreon supporters for making these videos possible. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.